Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Just got out of the shower, ready to start the new day. So today, I think I want to actually talk about something quite different than what I usually do for my normal videos. Honor Ramadan, which is an Islamic holy month where Muslims pray, fast, eat, donate, and do a lot of other activities. I want to make a video talking about my journey to Islam as a first generation Arab American living here in the States, more particularly in New York City, where... There's just a plethora of stories in general. It's a story that I have been very ambivalent to share about or even reflect with others around me for many months and for many years because it is a story that started with me and in a way ended with me as well. Um, it's still going, but that's not the point. But it is a journey that was filled with a lot of challenges, obstacles, and just a lot of self-reflection as well. But it's also been a journey that's been incredibly lucrative and it is one where Quite simply put, I would not be the person I am today if I did not have any of those experiences. On our Ramadan that's happening this year, I decided that I want to make a video today and talk about my journey to Islam because I do think it is one that is a bit unique. Maybe you guys can learn something from it or just get a new insight about how some Muslim Americans... So my journey to Islam, I would say, started around 2016. And at the time, I was a high school sophomore. There and then, I was kind of exposed to a lot of new realities. That was the first time where I saw a shocking amount of socioeconomic disparity between me and my peers. This was the first time where I got introduced to things like, hey, this is weed, hey, this is alcohol, hey, this is this, this, and this. And that was kind of the popular culture of Soho. It was also my first taste of materialism because at the time, like clothing brands like Supreme, and Uchi were something that these students were commonly wearing day to day. And along with this, I just found myself to be in a completely new world. And it was also just bizarre to me. That resulted in me not fitting in very well in the high school at the time. And I was very shy, very quiet, not make eye contact with people. And it was just a very difficult year because I was trying to find myself in this new high school environment. I wanted a fresh new start. So that it completely backfired and I was also just like, I think I'm depressed now. But other questions about who I am, who I wanted to be. And on one hand, as a teenager in Manhattan, uh, or just a teenager in general, the question of how far should I be involved in pop culture is usually a common question. For me, as someone who was struggling with a lot of anxiety, as someone who was a sort of workaholic, just trying to do as many things as I possibly could to avoid thinking about these questions and my problems, I was also someone who just inherently kind of understood that even if I went down this path where I started using substances or just did this and that, I knew that was not going to give me happiness. I knew that from the start and even though there was enormous peer pressure around me that hey, you kind of need to do this, um, if you want to be one of us, you should do this, I just knew deep down in my heart it wasn't my answer. Throughout those many months in sophomore year, I was trying to look for different answers and different solutions. And around May of that year, towards the end of it, Ramadan was actually coming up, I think, around June of that year. It was 2016, so definitely a bit further back than now. In my mind, I was like, okay, Ramadan's coming up. I am someone who is an Arab Muslim. And just to clarify my background a bit, for many years, until I was up to 18, I could not speak Arabic. So I come from a family of immigrants from Morocco and Egypt. However, Arabic was unfortunately not my native tongue. I could understand it, however, I couldn't speak in it, read or write in it. Also with Islam, prior to sophomore year, it was something more of a cultural tradition out of anything. It was just a type like, oh yeah, I'm Muslim, that's pretty much it. I don't really think about it. It's just something that I think differentiates me from my friends, meant to highlight my cultural background. That was kind of the thinking I had during elementary, middle school, and the first and first half of the year of high school. It's like, okay, when Ramadan's coming, I'm gonna go to the mosque, see my friends. We're gonna... That's pretty much it. Once Ramadan's over, I'm moving on with my life. Upon being like, noticeably depressed and also just having a lot of anxiety, a lot of sadness, and a lot of conflict at the time. When Ramadan was coming up, I was like, okay, I need to think. I sincerely know next to nothing about this religion. I have looked at everything in the book. I have tried working my ass off in the academic field. I have tried talking to people, socializing myself, trying to become popular. It's clearly not working. Even if it did, there's just my gut feeling that that's just not the sign of true happiness. And I was like, okay, I know nothing about this. Why not give it a shot? And at the, at the time, it was intimidating because as someone who didn't know Arabic, our Quran, our holy book is in Arabic. So at the time, I had to find some curveballs around it. So like, okay, how can I start learning about this? 
despite my ignorance in the language. And that is where the internet came in and there were some tr transliteration sites where basically it's like Arabic and English characters. And from there that's when I started reading and slowly start memorizing surahs. And at the time I was sincerely committed to doing that. Listen, I am, I feel like I'm back against the wall here. I really need to check something out. Let me see this. Let me scrutinize it. It's a holy month. It's time to find out more about my deen. And deen is just the Arabic word for religion. As time went, I slowly started memorizing and started reading these surahs. I was like, okay, that's pretty interesting. I did not know about certain content or certain context. And that started to intrigue my interest more and more slowly. And I found myself spending more time reading these surahs. And I remember this one particular day that was quite very powerful in my eyes because Again, as someone who was a workaholic, and I never really had time to self-reflect on who I was, where I was, and like, who I wanted to be. These were things that I actually wanted to run away from quite often. One day, one day, I was reading this surah named Surah Duha, and Surah Duha is a surah that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after a period where he did not receive any news or any messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the people at the time in Mecca and Medina were kind of mocking him for it basically calling it like ridiculing him and kind of spurring up him to be like a false prophet and, and when I read Surah Duha it was like Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ad-Duha wal-Layli zasaja ma wadaka rabbuka wa ma kala wa lal-akhiratul khayru laka min al-Ula wa lasafa yotika rabbuka fatarda but it basically translated to Your Lord has neither hated you nor has he forgotten you. And indeed the life of the hereafter is better than that of this world. I heard those two verses. I kind of went into shock. Um, it really touched my heart and it just was a feeling that I was not able to feel for the entire for that entire year. Just had a complete breakdown and I quite explicitly remember just crying for like three hours in my couch and I was just like this has touched me like subhanallah there that day on was the co where I made that conscious decision that I would remain on this journey steadfast and I would definitely stay more committed it soon became kind of a priority for me to memorize a new sora week by week to really start praying five times a day and to learn more slowly but surely and for the most part i would say i did a pretty steadfast job on staying on track i had a goal that every week i would memorize a new sora though it did come with some difficulties i found often that repetition trying to understand the english meaning i really wasn't getting it beforehand and then trying to memorize again really helped me and this was kind of a routine i carried all summer again this was in my house so this was quite fun for me to do however um coming back to junior year in a high school where i was not particularly liked and this was also a very small very intimate school i realized a new challenge that would really have to take me out of my comfort zone. So in case you guys don't know, for us Muslims, we pray five times a day and we have different allocated times throughout the day. I realized that, okay, at the very least, considering how busy I am, I have to go to school every day, I'm going to have to pray on time at least two to three times around school or work environment if I'm actually serious about this and I want to stay committed to it. And at the time, as someone who was a very inherently shy person and someone who did not have a lot of self-esteem and confidence, this was an absolute shock for me. This was something that took me a bit to process because I realized just how big the challenge was. Because again, I went to a very small school, a very opulent school also in the middle of Soho. There were hardly any Muslims in my grade, let alone in the entire school. And it was almost sort of like a secret identity to me. It was like, okay, buddy, if you're going to do this, no one can know. Like, no one. Like, not your parents, not your friends, not your family, not your counselors, not those team leaders who are in your clubs. No one. Like, no one can know. So somehow, some way, I had to find a place out of those two small stories, or like those two small floors to find prayer. And in addition to that, we do a ritual called wudu, which is basically cleansing ourselves. Usually we have to, wa not usually, we have to wash our hands, mouth, nose, face, arms, and yes, our feet also. And something that was terrifying to me, but I was more encouraged by the fact that I genuinely felt that I found something that changed my life for the better. And I was like, okay, Mehdi, if you're committed and you are someone who walks the walk just as much as you talk the talk, you have to do this. And with a lot of hesitancy, a lot of ambivalence, I went for it. 
And I remember during the first month, month and a half, um, whenever it was like 1.30, I would be in classes like chemistry or physics, and I would just excuse myself, I had to use the bathroom. Then I would quickly rush to the bathroom, try to wash myself as quick as possible. And I would go to one of the staircases and actually pray in the middle of the staircase. And it was something that did require some sacrifices. Um, usually, if I took longer than like five minutes, obviously the teacher would be like, Hey, Medi, like, what were you doing? What's up? Why did it take you that long? And you usually have to come up with some really quick white collar lies and just talk about, like, oh, um, you know, like, there was just a line. Oh, like, I bumped into the principal. She just wanted to talk about something real quick. And I'll come up with every lie from the book. And this was something that, although strained me a bit, it was something, again, I was ready to commit to, and that was something that happened for a while. But again, some teachers were also a bit more hesitant, and they were also a bit more pessimistic with it. And I don't blame them at all. Like, hey, from their eyes, a student just wants to get out of their class, they're taking longer than five minutes, like, what is he or she doing, right? The thing is, eventually, after a month and a month and a half, where just because it was such a high-stress environment, just trying to find a place where no one could find me to do it, as quickly and as authentically as possible eventually just became too stressful for me and i was like okay like i need to let someone know this is my situation so at the time i had a guidance counselor named miss cologne and miss cologne is the real mvp i love her so much but basically she was the leader of my community service club that i was involved in at school up to her i told her like miss cologne can i talk to you privately people notice if you guys have social anxiety you guys know how much of a struggle this is I eventually it was like miss cologne i'm a practicing muslim as part of my faith i need to practice five times times a day and then she's like okay Betty you know what here's the deal I'll give you my room when you when you need it I'll lock the door you can take your time and just do what you have to do she was someone who really worked with me throughout the year and because of her I was able to mitigate quite a lot of stress from that particular journey however that was not the end also have to face this challenge in the outside so basically after i was commuting to school to after school programs or doing my own thing or even just hanging out with friends when the time came what was i gonna do how was i gonna adapt it's not possible without some sacrifices and some failure and one distinct example that i remember is when i was in my after school college course a teacher was a very nice but very blunt lady she was someone who got straight to the point was very honest about what she wanted and what she didn't want and if you were failing to meet her expectations she let you know hey you're messing up here throughout my time in the semester i would excuse myself and then basically go to a staircase that would pray as quickly as i could because for me it was kind of like almost like a stealth mission that's like the analogy looking back she probably found it a bit weird why it took so long to use the bathroom because that was my excuse at the time but she went along with it it was fine it was just normal class to class interaction no big deal. However, I remember on the final day of class when we had our two-hour final, I was in the middle of taking this final. I was like, okay, this is not the hardest thing in the world, but I need some time and effort, and I need to concentrate to do well. And I remember looking at the clock, and I was like, it's 4.30. It was like one of those moments in life where time just slows down, and you know you have a decision to make. Just wait, go home, miss the prayer, just do it with my other mother prayer. Or do I do it now, even though I have a final? For most of you guys, you'd be like, listen, bro, just wait until home, just do what you gotta do then. But for me, again, I was someone who was sincerely committed to doing what I had to do, and I was like, this is a sacrifice I have to do. Turns out on that particular day, when I did excuse myself to go to the bathroom, the line was simply humongous. Residential city colleges, they always have huge lines for bathrooms or just any service in general. So it took quite a bit of time to just get through that. So it was a very hectic day. It was like kind of like rush hour, middle of Manhattan. Everyone was trying to go home. So basically the staircases, elevators, you can name it. They were all crowded. Eventually when I came back, first thing that happened as soon as I opened the door, my professor in this like very harsh voice said, where were you? And I was like, what do you mean? And then she's like, you know, you took like 20 minutes to get here, right? Like, what were you doing during those 20 minutes? And I knew the personality of this teacher. I was basically like, like, and then she was like, were you cheating? Because you could have easily just been using those computers to search up the answer. No, like, listen, you don't understand. Like, it, I just was using the bathroom. And she's like, I know you're lying. You better tell me what you really did or else like you're failing this exam. And for me, again, I was really shy, really introverted. And literally every single person in that class who I hardly knew to begin with were just staring at me. I felt paralyzed. My mouth was open, but like my words were not coming out the way I wanted them to. And then she was like, you know what? That's fine. You're failing the exam. Have a good day. And then basically for the rest of that day, I just went back to take that exam, finish it up and just handed it to her knowing that 
I decimated my chances of passing. Little did I know years later that I did end up passing the class and getting the credit for it, but at the time it was very humiliating. Like, it was something I saw as a huge defeat and like a huge L, but it was something that was the fight. It was one of those defining moments in my journey to becoming a practicing Muslim. And in short, in summary, that was the majority of my junior year where basically every day I looked forward to not only a day of classwork and other endeavors that I might have been doing with my friends, it was also a day where I was looking forward to, okay, what place am I going to pray? Bathroom am I going to use? What am I going to do? Where am I going to do it? Who's going to see me? Who's not going to see me? What am I going to think? These were just some of the many questions that I would have each day. Junior year in high school was quite a defining moment for me just because it was sort of the beginning, like a journey has a beginning, middle, and end. And from depression and anxiety, that's where I was able to find my dean. And even though it was quite terrifying, especially living in America where post 9 11 is a bit of an ambivalent time, like the reputation of Muslims or just Arabs in general, or just anyone who comes from either of those groups is questionable to the eyes of many people. You live in a society that's very secular, and just, it, and just also being a teenager living in the 21st century where a lot of teenagers around you are just, they just have different goals in life. However, the beginning was something that I look back with with a sort of fondness. I absolutely regret nothing that happened from that journey. It was something that I really learned a lot about myself, what I could do and what I could accomplish if I set my mind to it. It taught me the importance of being organized, setting a schedule, and prioritizing what I thought was important at the time. And inevitably for all of us in life, we are gonna be at that period or stage in life where one of us, not one of us, where basically we're just gonna be alone. We face certain challenges, hardships, or just other obstacles, and there's not gonna be people around us. Sometimes there will be, sometimes it's mostly just you and it's your own story. That so taught me to appreciate how the dots connect looking back, not how they connect forward, because if I had bodied the philosophy the other way around, I would have had no idea what I was doing and I would have let that inundate me and kind of prevent me from doing that. And with that being said guys, this is basically the beginning of my story. In my next video, I'm going to go more into my senior year and the start of college and how my relationship with the religion transformed. Asalaamu Alaikum, take care guys, have a good one.